Hello everyone and welcome to Walk and Talk on Onco Daily. Today we're here with Dr. John Gore. Dr. Gore, would you please introduce yourself? Yeah, I have to. My name is John Gore. I'm a urologist from the University of Washington in Seattle, Washington, uh, USA. Okay, thank you. We're just going to take a walk and ask questions. Excellent. If you don't mind. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So the first question is, what's a hobby or a pastime that you're incredibly passionate about? And how did you get started with it? Yeah. Um, well, I guess I would say um, probably hiking. Uh, so I grew up uh, going on a lot of camping trips and seeing a lot of the national parks in the U.S. And then now I live in Seattle, which is uh, close to the mountains uh, with lots of beautiful hiking trails and waterfalls. And so I, I love to go hiking. Okay, that's perfect. Can you describe a place you visited that had a profound impact on you and what was it about that place that left such an impression? Yeah. Hmm. Um, well, I've been really lucky to get to travel to a lot of places. Um, one place that I got to go to that was sort of a dream from when I was younger, mm. and then I got to go uh, because of the kind invitation of a friend, was Iguazu Falls, mm. which is on the Argentina-Brazil border. And um, the last day we were there, you get to the very end and you get to this area that is just a massive torrent of waterfalls. And a stranger said to me, uh, cause we were both just in awe, you know, how can you not believe in God when you see something like this? And so that had a, just a really profound sort of yeah, the imagine, power, yeah. of, power of nature, you know? Wow. Okay. Who has been the most influential person in your life and what lessons have they taught you? Uh, I mean, I think like, like many of us, oftentimes the answer is a parent. Parent, yes. Uh, and so for me, probably, uh, certainly my mom. Uh, she was a single mom and then she went back to school. And so mm -hmm. it's sort of the importance of hard work, the power of education, um, always trying to do better for the next generation. And so for sure, my mom. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> What's a book, a movie, or a piece of art that has had a significant influence on your perspective of life? Oh, uh, it's interesting. So I was in Chicago for our annual urology meeting, mm -hmm. and I grew up close to Chicago, and I grew up visiting with my mom the Art Institute, and there's a piece of art there that always sort of gave me peace and inspiration, and it's called Sky Above Clouds 4, mm -hmm. and it's by Georgia O'Keeffe, and it's a massive painting. Oh, it's it takes a up, yeah, and it takes up almost an entire wall. But um, I've always loved that painting. Uh, that's something I always go back to too. Mm -hmm. So if I go to Chicago, I try to at least visit that painting. A piece of home, maybe. Yeah, a piece of home, a piece of comfort. I mean, a little bit of inspiration. So that's always been a big part. I, I love it so much. We actually have it in my office. We have oh. a little small print of it in my office. <laughs> okay, I can tell that you like it very much. I like it very much. <laughs> Hey, can you share a memorable travel adventure or a dream destination you'd like to visit someday? Oh, um, I would uh, love to go to Africa um, for a lot of different reasons, for natural beauty, uh, for experiencing wildlife, experiencing local culture, uh, so probably, uh, and different parts of Africa too, you know, uh, Southern Africa, uh, East Africa, and um, that would be a, a dream destination. Is that like a doctor kind of thing? Because you're the second person that we're really? interviewing that answered Africa to this question that their dream is to visit Africa. I think so. We're waiting for your stories from Africa. Yeah, I think part of it is it's so far. So for us, it's a gigantic trip yes. to go, and so it's something that you have to really want to dedicate a lot of time and effort to doing. And so it's something you can't you can't just go to Africa for a long weekend, you know. Yeah, and well, so obviously, it's, yes. <laughs> it's something that you have to plan for and dedicate a lot of time to. So you're the second person that we're waiting to hear from Africa. Yeah. <laughs> what are some of your favorite ways to unwind or relax after a long week or day? Uh, so I have two small kids, and so that usually is the substance of my weekend mm -hmm. so you know when kids are teenagers you know they sleep in on the weekend they sleep till noon <laughs> well, mine are young so they wake up at 6 a.m 5 45 a.m but i really love that because it gives me a lot of time to 
hang out, you know, make More breakfast. More time to spend together. Yeah. Right? So that, that for me is weekend time. Okay. If you could have dinner with any historical figure, alive or dead, who would it be and what would you ask them? Oh, yeah. That's a tough one. Um, I don't know. Uh, I guess that's one I didn't see when we looked before. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, I, I do love history. Um, and I love thinking about, you know, what led someone to do something, to write something, or to sculpt something, or to create something. So I love those stories. So I, I might pick someone historically who was an artist to try to ask them about, you know, what inspired them to for build that. X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. Maybe I could unlock the mystery of the Mona Lisa from Leonardo Maybe. da Vinci. Why is she so unhappy? Maybe that would <laughs> be my she? question. Is, is she? she? Is yes. she? Or is she bored? Maybe. Maybe she's yes. bored. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's an interesting perspective, mm -hmm. though. Yeah. Uh, can you recall a life-changing moment or decision that altered the course of your life? I mean, probably my decision to go to medical school. Mm -hmm. um, I um, wasn't, you know, like many young people, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And so I had sort of a moment of clarity where I decided to go to medical school. And, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, doctors are different in a way where our career is very much part of our sort of life identity. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's a big part of my life identity, and yes. so I think the you, decision you to go to live medical by school that. a little bit, yeah. Your profession, right? yeah. It's hard to kind of leave it behind, right? Okay. How do you define happiness, and what activities or experiences bring you the most joy? Oh, that's a great question. Um, I, I do think happiness is someone that has to be something that has to be sort of internally driven, right? So I would define happiness based on sort of what I I bring. To sort of my environment and the positivity mm -hmm. that I bring, I feel like if your definition of happiness relies on external factors, mm -hmm. that's a recipe for unhappiness. Uh, also short-lived, right? Short-lived. Yes. And so uh, I think you know I try to orient myself towards positivity um, in terms of things that bring me joy. I mean, again, you know, um, your kind of perspective changes when you mm -hmm. have kids, and so. <laughs> That's a big part of it. They also bring me a lot of pain, um, <laughs> but uh, joy. I also I um, I love like things in nature that are just sort of awe inspiring mm. and are reminders of sort of how kind of vast time is. Mm. So things like canyons and waterfalls, things that just kind of remind you, um, you know, that that we've been here for such a short time yeah. relative to the length of time this planet has been here. Yeah, we have for a very short time, so better make it worthwhile, Better right? make it worthwhile, Yes, 100%. Okay, how do you, I uh, know, can you share a valuable life lesson you've learned from a personal challenge? Um, one that I can think of is that in medicine, we tend to, um, we tend to beat ourselves up for mistakes or uh, patient outcomes that weren't what we wanted them to be, you know, things that, that went in a direction that, that we feel responsible for mm -hmm. or part of. And that's really hard. And so one lesson that I also try to pass on to our residents is that you, you have to take time also to celebrate all the good things we do, because we do do a lot of good yeah, things. And it's overlooked, right? And, and it's overlooked. And it's overlooked by ourselves. And so I think one lesson is to celebrate successes. You know, I think humility is very important, but Absolutely. I also think celebrating good things that happen in our lives is really important. Think, and, and in our job, you know, one of the really good things that happens is we do help a lot of people. Yes, absolutely. I think it should be referred to every single person. Yeah. This, like, not really specific to any sort of profession. profession. Yeah, right. 100%. Celebrate successes. Yes. Please and thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what's a skill or talent you've always wanted to develop but haven't had the chance to pursue yet? Oh, that's easy. Music. Oh, really? Yeah, music. So I was a dumb kid and I was taking piano lessons. And you can see my fingers. I have like perfect, uh -huh. skinny, incredibly Mighty. long, like spider-like, yeah, piano playing fingers. Uh, and I gave it up to be bad at baseball. <laughs> And so, uh, if I could, uh, That's I would. That's an interesting pick up music. way of going. <laughs> and and as my friends always say, 
you know, I still can, mm -hmm. and so I just need to prioritize it. Yeah. Well, but yes. I would yes. say music. Okay, I think you can still do that if 100%. you want to. 100 percent. But if you want to. Yeah, and I do. <laughs> can you describe a tradition or a ritual that is meaningful to you or your family? So um, I would say holidays and birthdays. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think um, holidays are such a unique time to gather as family and to focus on like the importance of family. Mm -hmm. And so um, I would say some of the things that anchor uh, the different holidays that we celebrate. So like one of my favorite holidays in the U.S. is called Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And so it's every November and it's all oriented around bringing family together, being thankful for various things that you have or that you had in that year uh, and eating a lot of food, which I know you can relate to. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Can you share a funny or quirky personal story that never fails to make you laugh? Ah, so um, one of the things that uh, is a favorite hobby of my kids mm -hmm. is asking us to tell funny or embarrassing stories about ourselves. So on a car ride, that occupies a lot of time because they want to hear like embarrassing stories about well, us. Yes. <laughs> so their favorite story is I was in Australia and I was eating lunch with my wife and the ketchup packets in Australia are very different than uh -huh. the ketchup packets in the U.S. So in the U.S. you just rip off a corner yes. and squeeze out the ketchup. In Australia it's this box and you have to squeeze it together. Oh. And I squeezed it the wrong way. So I thought I was squeezing it on my plate yeah, and I side. squeeze it on my pants <laughs> right on my crotch. Oh yeah, that wouldn't make anyone laugh, yes. Well, so no, this is the part <laughs> that made everyone laugh. So then I went to the bathroom because it's ketchup oh, yes. and I was wearing white pants. Oh. So I washed off the ketchup and when I came back to the table, <laughs> uh, my wife saw me and I had a gigantic wet spot Stain, yeah. all around my crotch. So it looked like I just wet my pants. And she was laughing so hard. She was trying to take a picture. She was laughing so hard. <laughs> couldn't she couldn't take even a take a picture. So I like that story because, number one, I'm not afraid to embarrass myself. And I think that's an important quality. I think we're all too sensitive. Yeah. And so I think that um, it reflects uh, my inability to be embarrassed. Mm. Okay, that, that is funny though. If it could give one piece of advice to your younger self, what mm. would it be? Oh, don't worry about things so much. Yeah, I think, um, I think that uh, when we're younger, we restrain ourselves for fear of embarrassment or for fear of rejection. Um, and um, uh, uh, there's a very famous athlete in the US named Deion Sanders. Uh, and he recently was giving a press conference uh, and he just basically said, I don't care what you think about me. I, I know who I am and I'm, I really like me. And I think that would be it. Is, um, I think when we're younger, it's very easy to be self-conscious Mm -hmm. and, um, and and that makes us nervous, and so I, that's what I would tell myself. Okay, perfect. I think we all need to tell that to ourselves. One hundred percent. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank Gore. This much. is all for today. We had Dr. Gore today for our interview. Stay tuned for future interviews. Thank you.